A lot of us in the photography industry have been worried about AI taking jobs from real photographers. Well, much like John Connor reprogrammed the T-800 and sent it back in time to fight the T-1000 and save his younger self, I am going to use the machines to fight the machines. In a recent video, I talked about how I've been using Evoto AI in my retouching workflow to speed things up. And I guess that the robots were listening because one of their subservient humans contacted me and asked me about doing a sponsored video. So thanks Evoto for sponsoring this video. And uh, we're gonna dive into that right now. But remember that just because somebody sponsors a video, I never promise to be nice or say things that aren't true or show you how I don't actually use it. So like all of my videos, I'm gonna tell you what I like about it what I don't like about it, and who I think it's for. Now, Evoto is a desktop app that uses AI to do a bunch of things, retouching most especially like blemishes, eye bag removal, face reshaping, teeth whitening, a whole bunch of other stuff, background replacement and body reshaping. It can even process raw files and it does a pretty damn good job, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't use most of the things that it does because my needs are pretty simple. So the plan here is I'm gonna dive into a real job and show you how I used Evoto in that workflow. When I shoot a job like this, I shoot tethered into Capture One and I use headshot tools to rename, upload, and instantly deliver unretouched proofs for the participants to select their favorite image for retouching. After that, I export the list of retouch images from headshot tools and mark them in Capture One as five stars and make any additional adjustments to the raw files before I get ready to do the final retouching on them. Then I export them as high-res JPEGs. Next, I pop into Evoto, add a new collection, and import the JPEGs I just exported from Capture One. So now I'm inside Evoto and you can see that it looks pretty much like most editing software. You got your film strip, your preview, and your tools on the side. There are a few different modules. You got your basic adjustments, your color adjustments, and you've got your portrait retouching, you've got your background adjustments, and then you've got a crop tool. And so you can kind of make up your own workflow, but the good news is, is that once you make the adjustments to the first image, you can just sync them to all of the others and then spot check them. So let's take a look at a couple of these controls. You'll see under portrait retouching that you have male, female, child, elderly, and single. So you can designate different slider settings for different people based on what kind of face that the AI in the program can detect. So if you like to do a little bit more for women than you do for men, that's up to you. If you want everybody to kind of get the same treatment, you can just put it under single and it will find any single subject and make those adjustments to them. So it's a pretty neat workflow. So I'm gonna start with single and just maybe remove some of the freckles and acne. I'm gonna reduce the oily skin a little bit. I'm gonna take some eye wrinkles out, remove dark circles under the eyes. So this is one of the things I like is that you can actually separate the eye wrinkles from the dark circles under the eye as two different sliders. I think that actually is a pretty neat thing. And so there are smile lines, neck wrinkles, double chin, and then you can go into the skin retouching. I mean, you can really go crazy with it. Like I said, it does a whole bunch of stuff that I don't normally do. And at any time, you can kind of get a good before and after look on those images. I'm gonna find that I really like the oily face, which kind of gives things a little bit more matte. And I'm going to use just the dodge and burn for smoothing the face. Now you can do a teeth touch up, which I like. It's got teeth whitening, which if it detects teeth, it will whiten them for you, I think is really cool. It's got a feature called pretty teeth, which kind of takes messed up teeth and just sort of AI replaces them with better looking teeth. Um, I don't really use that that much, but it's cool that it's there. And it's got the ability to brighten up the eyes just a little bit, add makeup, reshape the body, reshape the face. There's a ton of stuff in here, but I do a pretty basic reset. So what you can do when you get the adjustments the way that you like them is that you can save a preset. So I'm going to call this one, I have a whole subset, a group of presets called team headshots. And so I'm going to call this grad headshots for this job that I just photographed. And you can choose which things to sync and save those. Good. And now that's done. And so now all I have to do is select all the images. I hit commander control A and hit sync. And so it's gonna let you choose which things you wanna sync and boom. And now it's going to sync that effect to the other 49 files and those are pretty much ready to go. Now you'll notice that I shot kind of on a gray background but in any given situation when you're shooting volume, sometimes it can be hard to get the background consistent. 
And so using the background tool, this is pretty wild. You can actually knock out the background with one click and it does a pretty good job. You can also use one of its preset backgrounds like white to make sure that everybody gets the same exact white background or the same exact gray background. You can also upload your own backgrounds and we do this quite a lot. Like for example, you can just pop in an office and do that, sync that removal and replacement across all the images. And I found that it works very convincingly in about 95% of images. Every once in a while, you have to go in there and use their masking tools, which you can actually grab this little guy right here and fine tune the background and even paint stuff in and out if it doesn't quite work the way you want it to. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna give everybody that cool gray background so that everybody has a consistent gray. And I'm gonna sync them again. And now it's synced and they're all going to have that same consistent gray background with that light gradient all the way across every image. So now I'm gonna export them and that's pretty much it. Retouch 50 images while explaining you how I did it in about five minutes or so, probably less. I don't know, I'm not watching a timer. So go ahead and export them, shoot them where we wanna go, and there you have it. So let's break it down. First, I wanna tell you what I love about Evoto. I think that for a good base retouch, it's pretty perfect for about 90% of my images. Now, it doesn't do certain things like stray hairs and lint on clothes, but I have a strong suspicion that those things will get added to the platform before too long. And so I do have to go back and spot check a few things here and there, but overall, this speeds up my workflow tremendously. My favorite thing is the background replacement. I have a lot of clients where I shoot new hires over a long period of time, and I'm able to upload an image of the background that I used on previous shoots and drop that into any new hire headshots with one click, giving me really great consistency across the board. One of the valuable things about this is that the more people that you are retouching in a situation like this, the more time it saves you. As it scales up, it just gets better and better and better. I also like the price. Now, Evoto is free to download and play with as much as you want. It even comes with a few credits, which brings me to how the pricing works. It's on a credit system for images that you export. And so I used to spend for a retouching and a background replacement about three or four dollars per image with a retouching service. With Evoto, now that's about six or seven cents an image. I got a whole bunch of credits like 1,200 for about 80 bucks. Now that will last me quite a long time. Now let's get into what I don't love about Evoto. The first thing is gonna be some of the things that it doesn't do. For example, it has a hard time differentiating at times between freckles and moles and blemishes. And I think that's pretty common across the board. Although, like I said, it does a great job for about 90% of the images I retouch. I would love to see them add in the future some other things that I think are missing. Stray hair removal, lint on clothes, wrinkles on clothes, and glare on glasses. Those things would take it to about 98% of the retouching that I have to do on my images. And I have a feeling that at some point here in the near future, those things are going to get added, but right now, they're not there. Now, one of the other things that I think could be improved here is the export feature for Evoto. You do have to import and export images in and out of Evoto as you use them. And the export feature is pretty basic and could be a little more robust, like allowing you to create custom names for your images on export. Now let's talk about who Evoto is for. In my mind, although there are thousands of potential uses for Evoto, there are two main use cases. The first is for portrait and wedding photographers who want to get a better level of proofing with their client. So let's say you're a portrait photographer who's gonna do some kind of a sales session with your client. You can run your proofs through Evoto and get them polished up and looking great with almost no time and very little money. It's gonna up your level of customer service and make your images look a lot better. Now, the other use case that I'm thinking about is for photographers who shoot volume, whether it's schools, sports, or headshots, Evoto will enable you to deliver your finished product a lot faster to your client and potentially save you a ton of money. Now to finish up, let's just take a look at this job that I just processed in Evoto. I'm gonna show you the before and the after side by side. Thanks for watching.